Merce Cunningham is considered one of the last great modernists in dance. Mikhail Baryshnikov said that seeing the organized chaos of Cunningham's dancers for the first time was like discovering neo-expressionist painting. His career began more than a half a century ago, and he has embraced innovation along the way. He continues his work today, amazing critics with dances as strong and as fresh as ever, and I am very pleased to have him back at this table. Welcome back. Thank Great you. Have you. <laughs> I want to tell you, did anything you disagree with what I said? Did that ring true to you? Uh, I don't mind. You know, <laughs> I mean, the word that they always use, they always talk about you. It's almost like if you go do a computer search of you and Merce Cunningham, sort of abstract or avant-garde is going to be within three or four words connected to your name, right? Yes. Well, at least that's what they've done. With yes. It, yes. <laughs> uh, does that please you? I mean, that... It neither pleases no, me or displeases. I don't, yeah. I don't mind. Uh, let me just talk a little bit about career. That, that you have wanted and liked the idea of dance uh, since you were very, very young, haven't you? Well, I think it was theater, but, but theater. mainly dance. Yes. Yeah. I, it was just part of me. Why was that? Uh, I can't, there's no reason in, in that sense. It's just that it was there and uh, uh, something about loving movement. Yeah. And I, as an adolescent, I had tap dancing from a wonderful woman yeah. in, my, in the small town. And um, she was absolutely marvelous. Uh, she t would t taught us uh, uh, different tap dances in her kitchen and these few little students. And when we didn't do it properly, she would say, no, no, that's not right. She'd get up and do it. And I can still hear her doing those things, yeah. doing the rhythm. Yeah. Your life has been, in part, an exploration of movement. I think that's what has always interested me. I, I have no reasons for it, but that uh, discovering something seems to be, have been part of my life, perhaps in, in other ways, too, but primarily in dance, yes. Yeah. When did you meet, first meet John Cage? I was in school in uh, Seattle. Oh, this the was the famous, school. Uh, what's yeah. it called, the Cornish School? Yes, that's right. 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 Yes, yes. And, and he came to... Uh, uh, it was the second year I was there, and he came to play the piano, accompany the dance classes. Yeah. And uh, um, one of the things he uh, uh, did while he was there during that year uh, was to found a little percussion group, uh, with uh, mainly with using teacher, music teachers from the school. But he said, "Your rhythm is very good. You 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 should be in this too." And I said, "Well, but I I'm not a technical person with uh, with percussion." He said, "It doesn't matter. <laughs> you just have to be able to be clear about rhythm." Yeah. Uh, I, the interesting thing, which I didn't know about you, which was interesting to me, I'm a native of North Carolina. You really the the idea for your own company crystallized in North Carolina, didn't it? Oh, Black Mountain. Yeah, college. Black Mountain, <laughs> yeah. aggressive college down yeah. in North Carolina. Yes, and, and John was there, was he not? And yes, Robert okay. Rauschenberg was there yes. as a set designer. Yes, yes. Well, he 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 was there as a student yeah. when I was there, but later he began to make uh, sets for me. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you, the, the three of you travel around on some Volkswagen bus or that something? That was later on, but yeah. that's the way we traveled. The Volkswagen bus held nine people, so I had six dancers, two musicians, and yeah. Bob, who was the stage manager, the designer, everything. Yeah. And we traveled around the United States that way. And when I would say, people would ask me how many in my company, I would say six, because <laughs> that's what the bi bus would hold. Yeah. They all thought that was very odd, but I, it seemed to me reasonable. Yes. The, 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 um, the notion of the you, sense of the vi video and dance, and uh, you seem to have come to it before almost anybody. Is that right? Well, I, I uh, uh, worked with Ch uh, Charles Atlas, right. who was uh, my stage manager, and he was also a filmmaker, is. And he suggested working with the camera. Well, I never had anything to do with the camera. Right. So he said, well, look through it. So I did. And I thought, oh, that's amazing. It's all different. It would be a marvelous way to work. Rather than thinking it didn't look like the stage, I thought it looked like something else, with, and you yeah. could change your mind yeah. and work with that. And then you found the computer, too. I mean, you incorporated well, that in your more work. More recent, yes. Yeah. Yeah. When the did you start Lifeforms? When did it's you create Lifeforms? It's about five or six years uh, ago that I, they, yeah. they uh, brought me the equipment to work with, so I began. Yeah. And did you learn things about movement because of what you could do there? Yes, uh, 
You learn, or I did. I learned things that were always there. It's just that one had never seen them before. The potential of movement. You yes. could see with the computer image. But, but you know, what you see, you know, you see photographs uh, often of people doing things which you say, oh, I, I never saw anybody do that. The yeah. camera caught it, but your eye didn't. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing working with life forms for me that produces possibilities that were there. It's just that with this thing, you can explore them. And that's the part, I think, that really interests yeah. me. Yeah. The idea that, you, and, and do the dancers see it as well? I mean, are, do, you, do the dancers say, of course I can't do that? No. Well, well, of course, it looks like you can't do I it know. often enough, but that's all right. We go ahead and do it anyway. And, <laughs> and in trying to do it, you learn something. Oh, yes. Or find something you, you new. Exactly. You find a discovery. And even if you can't do what, exactly what it is, you find something else. Yeah. So the, again, it's the creative. Is is for you the excitement of finding the the act of creating a dance, or in fact the final performance of or the end of having created the dance and the set piece? Oh, I, I like the work that goes in doing it. Yeah. I think that's the that's the interesting part. The process. Process. The yeah. process of making because it involves finding out things you didn't know before. What are you proudest of? What, what have you, well, I mean, you know, what well, have you created that you think the contribution you made, I mean, you were with, Mar uh, with Martha Graham, you left that because you wanted to explore abstract expressionism more, yes? I mean, I don't want to put fancy words on it, but the, right? Oh, I think the, the best thing is to be able to continue. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, there's all this is chaos about stuff. I mean, you, you know, it's, it, 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 your work doesn't follow a storyline. No. It no. follows what? It follows, a, it follows searching a, for a, a movement filling a space line. and a movement. Yes, a movement. yes. Uh, uh, dance for me is movement in time and space, and the kind of space can be one that is familiar, like a stage. Yeah. It can be in front of a camera where the space is different. It can be a churchyard where we have performed. <laughs> it can be a museum, or it can be even a, as once we gave an, one of our events in the Piazza San Marco in yeah. Venice, and that was amazing. <laughs> Uh, let me take a look at this. This is a clip from Beach Birds. Anything you want to say about this before we show the clip? Yes, it is very simply that uh, the dance was originally made for the stage called Beach Birds, mm -hmm. then remade for the camera, and it's called Beach Birds for Camera. Now, I, I, I don't know if it will go ahead, roll tape, and we'll take a look. Tell me what I just saw. You saw a segment out of Beach Birds for Camera near the end of the film. Yeah. Yes, one, one of the, of the, the things. Uh, the, the film begins in black and white, and halfway through it changes to color. Why? Um, well, that's a, a possibility that uh, the filmmaker with whom I work, Elliot Kaplan, right. said this was a possibility. Would you be willing to try it? And I said, yes, of course. Yeah. Any great regrets you have about this distinguished career you've had? Oh, no. None. Uh, no. no uh, uh, it's not about a great career. It's the fact that I've been able to continue doing something that interests me, and it keeps being interesting, regardless of my particular uh, infirmities. And what is it that makes it interesting for you? Because I, can, I keep finding uh, uh, things about life and people that I didn't know about. Like what? I mean, I, in, in, you mean like what? Like, like through working with, well, working with dancers, as I do, have done all my life now, of course. Um, but in, in a way, to not only have a, a situation with, in which we can do our work, but the way we work together, that is the, the music and the dance and the visual thing, they are three separate identities, which at the moment of performance come together. So it is, in a sense, a political thing. That is, we travel around and present this work, uh, allowing as much freedom as possible for, for everybody in it. At the same time, there is this discipline. Yeah. What, what do you look for in dancers? 
Well, they have to be strong. Yes, of course. <laughs> be able to stand on two yeah, feet, right. one leg. <laughs> that helps. And, and move an arm at the same time. Uh, they have to have flexibility. And to my way of thinking, they have to have a resilience, not only in the body, but in the mind. A resilience to... To, to realize that things change. That you can cha- that, and that you can change. You can change your mind. Yeah not be fixed in the way something need be or think that it's only perfect one way. Everything is perfect. All you have to do is change your mind. Mm. Do you have heroes? I, um, well, yes, I think of people, you mean, whom I admire, for example. Yes. Well, enormously Buckminster Fuller. <laughs> really? Bucky <laughs> oh, yes. Fuller? Yes. Oh, because, he, because he was a philosopher and designed the geodesic and, dome and, the, and, and all those things. And a huge mind. And about thought the, grandly about big, new the, shapes the, and forms. Wonderful. And, oh, yes, yes. That. He, yeah. very, I often think of him. And He was at Black Mountain College, yeah, you see, so I know, I know him from yeah. there. And he was willing to be in a play that we did. <laughs> he was wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. I thought that's ex- extraordinary of this man to accept this and be willing to try this out. Yeah. He was a great success. Now, did Rauschenberg have the talent that, uh, yes. that would later show itself? Oh, I think Robert Rauschenberg is one of the great uh, stage designers of, the, of our time. Yeah. The extraordinary... Uh, that what he thought up to, to put up in to put in the theater to allow to take place in the theater. Yeah. What artists have influenced you the most? Whose work has influenced you? Well, I think probably Marcel Duchamp very really? much. Uh, the uh, the way he thought, the way he was as a person, I, yeah. <laughs> that was so marvelous. He never seemed to do anything, and yet he was there <laughs> and, and occupied. <laughs> it's great to see you again. Thank you. My it's a pleasure to have to you be here. With you. Merce Cunningham, my thanks to him and to our other guest tomorrow night, journalist Tony Schwartz. Will be, Tony Schwartz will be here. Also, we'll talk about the world of modeling with actress Lauren Hutton and Michael Gross, who's written a book about that subject. Actor Randy Quaid also joins us, and we'll see you then. Take care.